Today here on The Fissured Revolution, we're going to discuss three awesome films and how they look when processed in DDX stand development 1 to 9 for 45 minutes. The three films are Fomapan 100, Fomapan 400, and T-Max 100, all shot in 35mm. Um, it's important to know that I've already written extensive articles and videos here on Fissure Revolution 2.0 regarding stand development and DDX. So if you want to watch th those videos first, I'll put a link in the bio. You can click on it because I outline my technique from start to finish. Today, we're just going to look at the visual qualities of the three films. Also, all three films today were shot in 35 millimeter. A lot of the posts that I've been doing here have been fe featuring uh, 120 film, but today I decided I want to do this in 35, yet it was a custom 35 millimeter camera. It is a Virgin uh, stereo camera from the 1950s that was custom converted into a panoramic camera with a 65 millimeter uh, Schneider Kruznac uh, uh, lens on it, and it produces a negative that is uh, 24 millimeters by 88 millimeters, so it's a little more than a three to one uh, aspect ratio. So it's super wide and super awesome. Uh, all the shots were done on a tripod, uh, approximately f11, f11 and a half for a reasonable amount of depth of field. One thing that, as you, as you remember from previous posts that I've done on the DDX stand, is that generally speaking, the one to nine for 45 minutes at 70 degrees Fahrenheit gives you a little bit of a speed boost. You know, usually two stops, sometimes more. And what I wanted to see was on these three films, would that hold up? So let's first take a look at the uh, Fomapan uh, 100. Now, all the scans for these films were done on an Imicon scanner at 6300 DPI, 16 bit grayscale. So each scan was about 300 megabytes worth of data. So we're really seeing everything that's in that particular negative. So if you look at the Fomapan 100, it's what we've come to expect from Fomapan 100. It is a beautiful, classic film. The grain, the sharpness, the gray tonality, the shadow contrast, everything just feels classic and beautiful. And the one, well, two big advantages of the Fomapan 100 is that in this particular stand development in the DDX 1 to 9, you get a fair amount of uh, exposure latitude. You could easily rate this film at 50, 100, 200, 400, 640, 800. I mean, no problem. As a matter of fact, the example that you're seeing here is at 400. So I generally speaking, when I'm doing DDX one to nine as a stand, I generally speaking rate my Fomapan 100 at 400. It just it gets that increase in speed, which I find to be very helpful. Additionally, one of the things that I love about Fomapan 100 is that it's not that expensive of a film. As a matter of fact, about half the price of most Kodak and Ilford and Fuji offerings out there. So if you're working on a budget or you're just shooting a ton of film like I do, this film becomes a real go-to. Okay, so now let's take a look at Fomapan 400. Fomapan 400 is an interesting film in that it never really gets 400 in most developers. Um, most people will tell you to rate the Fomapan 400 at like 200 if you want to have reasonable shadows. Well, I did find that with the DDX 1 to 9 stand development, I was able to get a solid 400 out of this film. However, if you look at the grain, it's much coarser than the 100 Fomapan that we just looked at. Um, at, and that was rated at 400 as well. So if you want a coarser, sort of grainier look, yeah, go ahead and shoot the Fomapan 400. If you're looking for a film that has finer grain, still grain, but finer grain, and a little less contrast, I found that the Fomapan 400, the contrast was a little bit difficult to, to sort of live with. I, I, it, was, it took a little bit more work to sort of get the file to look the way that I want. So between the Fomapan 100 and the Fomapan 400, my argument would be shoot the 100 and you get the best of both worlds. You get speed, you get cost, and uh, it just, I think it has a better tonality. Now let's take a look at T-Max 100. Now, for the record, I've never been a big fan of T-Max 100. I used to like T-Max 400 a lot, but the 100 never really kind of fit. Um, and so I decided to run the same test. And what I found was that the T-Max... Uh, 100 didn't really get much of a speed boost. As a matter of fact, I would say rated at 100 or 200, 400 looked too thin to me by far. Um, the example that you're seeing here was at 200. It looks really nice. It's very sharp. It's very smooth. Um, just the slightest hint of grain. Um, do I think it's better than the Fomapan 100? No. And, and I, I think that the T-Max has a look. 
if you like the look of T Green films, much like if you like the look of a, of a Delta type film, then this might be a really good choice for you. It's a really nice combination. Um, but it's just a little too smooth for my eye, though I do have to say that this is one of the better examples of T Max 100, in my opinion, for skin tone that I've seen. Um, but there's a lot more contrast in the shadows. That was one thing that I noticed. If you compare it, here, I'll try to do a side by side. If you compare the two, you can see that the uh, Fomapan 100 has much more gentle gradation in the shadows. Um, the shadow to highlight is, is a much softer, more classic rendering. I find that the T Max 100 has just that extra contrast that doesn't quite fit for my eye. So there you have it. There's the three different films. All done. Take a look at them. See what you like. I'll continue to post uh, samples like this from time to time using the different stand development techniques that we've already outlined here. But important, if you have not watched the original stand development uh, videos, be sure to do that because it'll make this whole process uh, just more complete. Thank you very much for listening. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and have a great afternoon.